So, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm honored to be here and uh, speak to you all. And uh, Mr. Gareth Thomas san, um, uh, thank you for inviting me to this exciting symposium. Um, today, <clears throat> I'm here to talk about uh, the comprehensive concept of a uh, full information platform using blockchain technology, uh, using block, uh, sorry, uh, with some case studies. But um, to be honest, um, it is first time for me to give a presentation in English, so I have high pressure. Yeah, that's what said. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, there might be some some a little weird point in what I what I talk. But uh, I will do my best, and uh, please bear with me as I explain this. So, um, before starting, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kohei Kishi, and uh, I'm, I'm working as a researcher in the, for Mitsubishi Research Institute. We call that company uh, as a MRI. And uh, my company uh, is a Japanese think tank. Which, is, uh, which was founded by several Mitsubishi Group companies in 1970 for uh, the one 100-year anniversary of, of the group, Mitsubishi Group. And uh, my company, we uh, provide uh, research and consulting services for mainly for our government or private companies in Japan in, in various fields such as uh, scientific technology, or healthcare, or mobility, or energy, or information technology, and so on. And for me, uh, I'm mainly responsible for researching and consulting on uh, uh, agriculture and food industry, including the, the integration or implementation of new technology, uh, such as uh, blockchain. And I'm, I, I was also temporarily uh, transferred to Kirin Brewery Company for two years, these two years, and uh, I have just returned to my company. <clears throat> the Kirin Brewery Company is uh, one of the famous uh, alcohol and beverage companies uh, in Japan, and which is uh, one of the Mitsubishi Group companies. And uh, on the personal side of me, uh, I like traveling and cycling. And <coughs> actually, I, I have in the past I have traveled here to Kyoto from from Tokyo only by bicycle, and uh, the distance of it uh, maybe roughly equals to the, the Sydney to Melbourne. Yeah, it was tough days. So in any case, uh, this is the agenda of my presentation which consists of three parts. Uh, in the first part, uh, I will, I'm going to explain the overview of food supply chain in Japan and point out several issues around it. And in the second part, uh, I'm going to explain uh, the, the concept of food information platform using blockchain with some case studies. And lastly, uh, I will discuss the, the challenges, several challenges for implementation of the platform in Japan. So let's start with uh, the first part. This diagram, I'm, I'm sorry, for, uh, it's, it's a little busy slide, but um, this diagram shows the, the flow of the supply chain, food supply chain in Japan. And uh, each number, uh, uh, sorry, uh, unit of each number is uh, a billion US dollars. And I'm sorry that um, those figures are a little bit old. It's, it's uh, 2015. But uh, it hopefully provides you with the, the rough picture of the, the food market in Japan. And each column represents the, each stage of the food supply chain from primary product on the left to consumption on the right. And as you can see from this, um, the total market size of food in Japan is uh, on the right side, 
693 billion US dollars or uh, 949 billion Australian dollars and it, uh, including the fresh food and the processed food and the restaurant uh, such as food service and uh, it comes from the, on the left side the 93 billion uh, US dollars or 128 billion Australian dollars of raw materials like uh, agriculture or fishery products and uh, of course um, there are several import products imported products uh, including from Australia <coughs> and uh, many of the, the those primary products are traded in the, the wholesale markets and in Japan there are so many local wholesale markets like this and uh, I'm sorry I don't have exact figure but maybe 50 or 60 percent of of those 93 billion uh, US dollar are mainly traded in uh, wholesale markets like this so um, the food supply chain in Japan uh, has, 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 has progressed uh, in response to uh, the situation, each situation with each time. But recently, several social issues, such as um, here globalization or economic stagnation or population decline, uh, uh, this is uh, the, one of the most serious problems in Japan. Uh, including the, the aging population <clears throat> and uh, as you know the environmental degradation this is a global problem and those issues uh, requires uh, the food supply chain in Japan to drastically change from the from the perspective of profitability efficiency and sustainability so um, in, uh, in order to address those issues, the, the digitalization in various aspects in food industry uh, has been proceeding. And uh, especially the sharing and utilizing data through the sub throughout the supply chain is said to be important. So we should take one more step to to use uh, to use data, uh, which is left unutilized in each company or farmer or fisherman, <coughs> and uh, it could improve the efficiency of operation, such as reducing food loss uh, by optimizing the supply and demand, or it could improve efficiency by 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 making delivery and logistics. Uh, more efficient and uh, it also in, uh, it could also improve the, the sustainability of procurement management by visualizing the, the suppliers information such as the, the certificate the, they, they acquired or or their periodical operation data from all suppliers and on the purpose of profitability or branding, the, the telling the story behind the food such as um, such as the origin or information of the producer or production method uh, would be important. On the other hand, from the viewpoint of consumers, um, so when they buy some food product uh, in the supermarket, uh, they have become more aware of the, the other information than price, such as health, uh, such as the, whether the product is healthy or safe or sustainable. But in my opinion, the, this trend is still catching on and, uh, in the past one or two decades. And uh, there, is still, there is still some um, the room to grow compared to several other uh, developed countries. So next, I would introduce the, the trend uh, in the government. Two years ago, the Japanese government, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fishery, we call it MAF, 
and uh, Math uh, have launched uh, have, uh, launched the, the strategy for sustainable food system. Uh, it called uh, it is called Midori. Uh, Midori is I uh, mean the green in Japanese. And this is the, one of the hottest topic uh, in Japan, uh, in MAF. And in this strategy, uh, MAF aims to achieve the zero CO2 emissions, as the Mr. Thomas said. Uh, zero t uh, CO2 emissions in the agriculture, forestry, and fisheries by 2050. And for this purpose, uh, the MAF, uh, I think, is important to visualizing uh, visualize the, the greenhouse gas emissions for for uh, the purpose of um, monitoring the status of emission or obtaining some carbon credit or or creating some some new certification for carbon neutrality and there are several other uh, goals but um, to achieve those goals uh, the MAF will promote the development and the dissemination of new innovative technologies, including blockchain. But, however, um, before thinking about uh, integration of data throughout supply chain, uh, we should look at the characteristics of food supply chain in Japan, the, the, the complicated structure. So this diagram uh, represents uh, a supply chain of a certain food product. And for most food products, uh, the supply chain of, uh, would be the multi-stage network like that. And uh, there are so many companies, including uh, foreign companies, in each stage. And uh, many of them are small and medium-sized businesses and they trade in, in small lots or many varieties and uh, frequently and uh, as for digitalization um, especially in upstream stage like a uh, farmer or uh, wholesaler and, uh, farmer could be the, the fisherman or livestock farmer <coughs> and the uh, those, uh, especially in those upstream stage, um, the data management or the daily operation tends to be uh, non-digitalized or, or less, less standardized or uh, less integrated among companies. So uh, quite a few farmers or quite a few small companies still use uh, the fax or paper-based operations. So, um, so for example, uh, for it will be uh, difficult to difficult for one food manufacturing companies to uh, to gather the detailed information about production or 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 uh, this uh, distribution from all suppliers. So, as a result, uh, if some some food accident, such as uh, such as uh, overuse of pesticide in one farmer, like here, happens, and uh, it is found in some retailer shop. Uh, it will take so much time and cost to trace the cause, and it comes with uh, uh, yeah. So it's a problem of traceability. So um, that's why. It is generally said that uh, it, is, it is not easy to integrate data throughout all, all over the supply chain. So um, this is a <coughs> rough picture of uh, the food, food market in the Japan and uh, set with se several issues around it. So based on it, let me move on to the next slide. And I'm going to talk about the concept of food information platforms. Oh, is it okay? Um, platform with some case studies. So, um, 
This diagram is a conceptual framework of food information platform. And as I said in previous previous parts, uh, each company have several types of information of production or distribution. For example, for a farmer, it could be yeah, um, fisherman or a livestock farmer. But for uh, for a farmer, uh, they have uh, there is a, uh, the location of cropland or a date of harvest of crop or some kinds of certificate or such as um, quality or safety or sustainability. And uh, there is uh, the information of production methods such as utila uh, use of fertilizers or pesticides. And for the packer, or processor, and uh, shipper, retailer, they also have uh, similar data, similar information as well. And the, uh, the role of uh, food information platform is uh, to integrate those data depending on the purpose of use, such as traceability management, or procurement management, or efficient logistics, transaction or payment management, or branding. And uh, those information can be recorded, or should be recorded in several types, such as text data, numeric data, or visual data. And what I would like to say here is that all of those data or information don't have to be combined or integrated in one platform. It should be modified depending on the, the purpose of use. For example, traceability management mainly requires the information about uh, the location or the date of production or shipment or uh, the information about shipping lot. And it also depends on the, the de degree of the level of uh, the traceability. But in any purposes, for any purposes, uh, the, the authenticity of data is crucial. And that's why the blockchain is useful for those platforms. So uh, this is just, as you know, uh, this is just a concept. So what is actually, uh, what is actual case like in the world? Um, so far, um, in the world, the several commercialized uh, blockchain services for food supply chain has been launched, especially in US or Europe, and recently in China and in Australia. So, uh, of course, in Japan, there are so many uh, examples uh, of blockchain implementation in food supply chain, but many of them are still POC stages, uh, proof of concept stages. So, let me in, uh, explain each services in more detail, in a little bit more detail. Um, so far, the main application of blockchain in uh, food supply chain <coughs> is the, the traceability, traceability management. For example, uh, one of the most famous platform in the world is Food Trust, which is provided by IBM. And uh, the main feature of this uh, <coughs> of this platform or this service is the reduction of loss due to food accident by quick trace, by visualizing the, uh, the traceability network. And uh, several services, uh, some of the uh, services like um, Origin, the second one, and uh, Provenance, or the fifth one, aim to uh, improve brand value uh, by visualizing the, or by providing consumer with uh, information about origin or quality certification. And then uh, the transparency one, the third one, aims to uh, help, help food companies to manage the procurement 
networks and uh, to, re to reduce the risk in the compliance or risk in sustainability by visualizing the information of all suppliers such as the certificates acquired or, or their periodical operating data from all suppliers. And uh, we can also see the importance of collaboration from here. For example, Food Trust uh, by IBM uh, has been developed and promoted by the Association of Global Food Companies, such as Walmart. And, uh, uh, and also, uh, the several services, such as Transparency One or Toolchain, and they have cooperation partners of certificatial body, such as SGS or DNBGL. These are certification body for, for food. And uh, because um, collaboration with, uh, sorry, the big core, because the, the authorized organization like this uh, cooperates in, in data management, it helps uh, to it helps the each service to improve the authenticity of data management. So um, from here, uh, I would show I will show uh, some case studies in Japan, which includes the the one conducted by a few years ago. The first one is SMAG uh, by Information Services International Dentsu uh, or ISID. ISID is uh, the, the one of the, the subsidiary of Dentsu. And they developed the data platform uh, which provides consumers with production and distribution history. And they conducted uh, the uh, POC from 16, uh, 2016 to 2020. Mm -hmm. And they were focusing on local, high-quality agricultural products. And uh, the main feature of this project is that they uh, it's enhancing, or sorry, it's encouraging uh, the behavioral change in consumer uh, to com ethical consumption by enhancing consumer experience. For example, uh, when someone buy some product in this in this project. Um, and they, uh, they can read the QR code on the package and then they, they can see the information about the producer or origin of uh, production history. And then uh, they can also, a uh, consumer uh, can also know which goals out of the 17 goals of uh, SDG they contribute. And then, uh, 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 it through the game like experience on the smartphone. And then uh, they can easily share this information with social media. The second one is Boeing Blockchain by EY. Um, EY is uh, one of the global consulting company and they conducted uh, the POC in 2018. And uh, they are mainly focused on the, focusing on the wine supply chain. And as for, especially for luxury wines, there are so many problem of uh, fake wine or fraudulent. So it is important to record the information of the origin or wine making and uh, convey it uh, to consumers. Uh, it's in important and uh, the authenticity of the data is crucial. So. That's why uh, they use the blockchain. And third one is the block trace, uh, which is the commercialized uh, service provided by Entity Data. Entity Data is subsidiary of the Entity, the, the, the large telecommunication company in Japan. So um, they developed the data platform and they also conducted a POC of a traceability system, uh, which is subsidized by MAF in 2022. 
and uh, they also collaborated with various companies, uh, various uh, companies. And then uh, this project aims to uh, ensure the quality of product and increase the, the added value by visualizing not only the distribution route, but also the, the logo of temperature or shock during the transportation. Util uh, using some, some IoT tools like RFIDs or sensors. So these are a part of examples in Japan. And uh, <coughs> I hope uh, maybe several other speakers in this symposium will, will also give some example about great projects. So, um, as you can see from this, um, there are several cutting edge uh, examples. But in fact, uh, the food information platform have uh, pros and cons. And uh, so, there are several, uh, when we think about further dissemination or further development through the supply chain uh, of the blockchain platform, there are several issues. So then, uh, I will discuss several challenges uh, for implementation in Japan. So this is a summary of pros and cons of implementation of blockchain platform. So as for pros, uh, it could help the users to reduce uh, recall costs uh, or speed up the operation against the food accident. Or it could also ensure the product quality and, and to pro, uh, prevent food fraud. On the other hand, and the implementation of the platform will take uh, so much time and cost of, of daily operation, such as uh, inputting data, especially in uh, earlier stage of uh, supply chain. And uh, the larger supply chain, the larger supply chain, the platform uh, try to cover. Uh, the larger impact on those costs uh, it could have, and uh, it comes with it also comes with the standard uh, issues of standardization of data management, such as data format or scope of disclosure. Uh, it is uh, confidentiality problems, and so on. And it uh, it there uh, there are also uh, the risk of information input errors because the, the blockchain technology can ensure the input data itself. So um, it's very challenging to develop and disseminate the platform. But there are several key points for breakthrough. And the uh, first one is uh, by further uh, technology development, and uh, by developing the low cost or highly usable methods and devices, especially for, especially for uh, upstream stage of supply chain, like farmers or small companies, would be required. And, uh, and it also, it should be uh, corresponds to uh, the, the, the several characters of uh, complicated uh, structure of distri food distribution as I said. And second one is strategy. And uh, it relates to the, the design of the, in, uh, the system of uh, platform as a whole. And uh, as for targeting, the, the kind of uh, necessary information for in, uh, in platform uh, will vary uh, depending on the kind of food or supply chain. And for example, the vegetable as for vegetables, the, the <coughs> information about, for example, the pesticide or residual pesticide or or some kind of freshness will be important. And for for some kind of uh, 
high added value products such as the, the Kobe beef, the, the provenance on, and the, the authenticity of data will be important. So, and, uh, and then the, it will be, the, it could have the impact of the running cost because the, the different types of data uh, should be gathered and recorded into the, uh, into the platform in different way. And uh, besides, the, besides, the business model is also crucial. Uh, it relates to the problem of who will cover the cost. And the last one is collaboration, and I think it's very important. And uh, collaboration is crucial in several aspects. As for standardization, uh, standardization uh, should be achieved by, through collaboration uh, all of, by all over the chain, from production to retailing. And, uh, and uh, it, several uh, major enterprises um, can be driver, can be driving force for it. And government support uh, is also uh, important, uh, which is uh, financial support or regulations or coordination. And uh, the other uh, than the, the standardization initiative by major enterprises uh, is, is of course important. And in the case of Japanese food supply chain, the, the retailer have, tends, to be, tends to have the power. And third one, uh, as I said, uh, collaboration with uh, authorized body, uh, such as certification bodies, could be one of the possible solutions for verification of input data. And last one uh, is important, it's, it's vital. Uh, it's, in, uh, it's vital to encourage the behavioral change in consumer. Uh, in my opinion, the, the most uh, one of the, the obstacles for innovation or new technology integration into the supply chain in Japan is the, the structure of food market based on the low price and the relatively high quality product commodities and its intense uh, price com competition. So, um, so many companies uh, have a difficulty to at the cost of uh, digitalization investment, unless it leads to the, the other cost re reduction. So, and as I said, um, uh, asserting consumers are uh, uh, likely to have uh, preferred to the ethical product, tends to be, uh, yes, and uh, and, uh, we should promote this uh, this movement, and I think uh, blockchain could could be helpful, could be useful for this movement because it encourage it can encourage the value circulation between consumers and producers with its token, and there is some examples already, the one by the IBM. So. Um, in summary, uh, I, I talked about the, the overview and the several issues in the food supply chain in Japan and uh, we discussed, uh, we considered uh, the several the possibilities and challenges for implementation of blockchain. So this is the, the end of my presentation and thank you for listening. And